Uh, how did you end up with TNA? Well, I, uh, after WCW shut down, I opened my own business in, uh, in um, uh, Georgia, which I still have. And I ran my business for about nine months. And, bro, I got to tell you something. You know, being Vince Russo and running your own business, I don't have somebody running for me. I'm there. Right. And having people talk to you about wrestling every single day, you get to the point where it's like, you know, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? So, at that time, I was watching WWF a little, and as I said to you, I left something that I felt was my little baby, and I saw it turned into something that I wouldn't watch. Right. Unwatchable to me after this time. So, basically, you know, I called Vince, and, um, you know, I was looking to, you know, maybe go back and, you know, help them out and help them, you know, bring things back up again. You know, him, him and I hadn't talked in all that time. And uh, I met with them up there, uh, met with the writers and stuff. Uh, things really didn't work out. Um, Vince wanted me then to be a consultant, and I really didn't want to be a consultant because I wanted to be more hands-on, right. you know. So uh, at the time, Jeff was just starting TNA, so I had the opportunity to be more hands-on with him, so that's what I did. Were you ghostwriting, I guess, when TNA first started? No, no. not at all. Uh, even though everybody says I was, I wasn't. Huh. Is it true that Triple H and Undertaker didn't want you back at all when you, when you went back to the I know Undertaker didn't. And, and again, if I said anything to hurt him or did something wrong, I apologize, but I, I don't know what that is. Right. I mean... I, you mentioned Bradshaw also. What happened there? I, I know he hate. I mean, he's gone everywhere saying how much he despises me. And again, w w what I've done there, I don't know. All I know is I've been honest with him. As far as the Undertaker concerns, bro, all I know is, man, we, we came up with some awful good shit the three years I was there. So w what I did on that front, I don't know. I apologize for. As far as Triple H, bro, I was really tight with Triple H when I was with the WWF. And, um... I heard him make this comment about if he thinks he's going to come in here, blah, 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 we're a family, blah, blah, blah. Well, I got news for Triple H. If he thinks the WWF locker room is a, is a family, bro, he should hear some of the things I hear because that's, that's, that's not a family. And, and, and the reality was all I wanted to do was help. That's all I wanted to do because I saw something that was my little baby that I cherished and worked so hard in become something that... As a fan, I couldn't watch, and all I wanted to do was help. But when I got wind of these taker things and stuff like that, I was like, again, it's like, you know what, bro? If you don't want my help, go ahead, turn around yourself. I, I don't have a problem with that. If you guys have all the answers, then you don't need me. So, Getting back to TNA, um, did you think the pay-per-view concept would work Did you th when you first heard about it? A weekly pay-per-view, that is. If it were a different product than the WWE, yes. What were your initial impressions of uh, TNA? It, it wasn't the product that I had thought it was going to be. What did you think it was going to be? I thought it was really going to be... Perfect example. You can't do Sopranos on regular TV. You can't do Sex in the City on regular TV. Uh, and those are probably two of the hottest shows in the, within the last 10 years. I thought that TNA would be the wrestling pay-per-view that you couldn't do on television, which meant edgier, right. okay? Which meant a glimpse of nudity here and there, yeah. Not, not girls rolling around naked, but if something happened there or something happened there, yeah. Edgier characters, edgier language. You know, the Sopranos version of the WWF. That, that's what I thought it was was going to be. How did the power structure in TNA change over time? You know, bro, again, it, it, it's so difficult to say because I don't get involved in it, and I live in Atlanta, and, and what goes on in that office day to day it goes on, and, and I really try not to get involved. But, I mean, as far as the power structure, I mean, to me and my, my feeling and opinion, it just, it, it, it kind of feels like it's been all over the place. How has your relationship, I guess, with the Jarrett's changed since you started at TNA? And how did you first, you know, come in to the company? Well, I mean, when, when Jeff brought me in, I was supposed to be the writer. Right. Um, quite frankly, that never took place. 
and it was okay because he was my friend and, and I wanted to help him. I mean, my, you know, th there are no friends in this business, but I felt Jeff was a true friend and I really wanted to help Jeff with the business and do whatever I can. Um, but, you know, my role wasn't what I thought it would be. Um, it's been very difficult working with a friend in, in business and I mean, and it has, uh, you know, it's it, it, it strained our relationship um, and, and, I, and I regret that. But again, you know, the critics who talk about the wrestling business, they just have no idea unless they've been in it. And unless you've been in the trenches and unless, you know, you've had personal friendships and you, you just have no idea. As far as, I guess you said that you never really came to write any of the shows yourself. Was it Jeff working with you on, on most of the shows or... Because a lot of people believe that you wrote some of the shows. Or no, no, I, I, I never, I, I never wrote a single Vince Russo show there. Um, when when I started, Jerry was doing a lot of the writing. Um, then I was, uh, Jeff and I were doing some of the writing. Um, it's, it, it's, it's not really been consistent. What impact did Panda Energy make on TNA? A great, they, they were out of business. I mean, it was right. done. There's no question about it. And then you know, Panda came in. They saw the opportunity. Um, and you know they they saved it. Do you think it's going to go on much longer, or do you feel like Panda Adventure is going to you know pull out? It depends, bro. Because first of all, you know Panda is a big company. I mean, Panda owns a great percentage of the energy in the United States. So, I, I, to be honest with you, it's I couldn't even really tell you the business reasons why Panda's in it. I mean, so the, that's very difficult for me to answer because I don't know what Panda's looking for. Right. So, um, you know, that's... a write-off maybe for them? It, it could be. I mean, but I don't know. So, I mean, again, it's, it, it, it just really depends on what Panda is looking to gain from this, and, and I don't know what that is. Right. What was the typical uh, writer meeting, like at TNA? Different, and uh, I guess it would be much different than WWE. Again, bro, it's it, it, it was trying to write by committee, right. and, and my experience over ten years have told me that you know for reasons that I said earlier, it's it that that's not going to work. Whose idea was it to bring uh, Tony Schiavone in to do the angle with uh, uh, the announcer, Mike Tenay? Tenay? Yeah. Well, it was my idea to bring in Tony because I mean, you know, I. I, I Tony still loved the wrestling business. Tony is a friend of mine. I felt there was a place for Tony in, in, in the business, you know. But when we brought him in, I mean, we weren't really sure what the specific angle was going to be. The thing between him and Tanae kind of played out like that day. Right. You know, so it's not something that was kind of planned out for months in advance, you know.